right, welcome back to another week of tier list for fall 2024. 2024? Fall 2024 anime where I go over the most recent episodes and judge it based on how much I enjoyed. Of course, these are the shows that we've dropped. Why? They're not bad. It's just that you motherfuckers are not watching these shows for my audience. Now, first up. Let's talk about Grieving Souls. We had Grieving Souls just recently, and I think it was a, um, it was a good episode. It wasn't anything too special, right? I thought it would be popping off, but we were kind of still setting up on the whole premise of, like, who is Sophia? Why does Stri's sister, sorry, assistant look so much like Sophia? Why are the, you know, uh, the Akashic Tower group people that were capturing just looking at this... Sophia looking person, that's what she's Sophia. My mind is breaking. I think it might be a personality disorder or some sort of just playing dumb, but it was an overall good episode. There were some like cool animations with the lightning strike happening. Overall, the fight scenes were just, it's all right. The humor is probably the best part of it, which is obviously, you know, why it's a comedy show. It's just good. Just good. I think with Liz and, you know, Cry and Tino showing up next episode, I think that's when it's going to ascend to like here or maybe even here, but... Good for the most recent episode. Tower of God. I'd also put it just good. The episode prior to this was definitely got my hopes up because they're actually animating the fights and it's looking pretty decent. We're getting a lot more like lore drops in terms of like what the thorn even is, what Fug wants, what what's it called? Uh Enryu. Enryu the irregular being dropped is probably one of the hype moments. But it's hard to take a show like this as seriously as you should because of how lackluster the uh, amount of passion has been put into the work. So it's just unfortunate again that a show like this that should be getting better is getting such a mid adaptation. But the workshop battle is it's half decent. It's all right. The Horyang like dance scene didn't last too long, but the heart showing up was pretty funny to me. And you know, everyone's basically aware that Bam is alive. Like, he is alive, but we can't just reunite yet. So it's just alright. Just alright. Next up. Damachi. Most recent episode of Damachi. Uh, I think I'm gonna probably put it at great. Right? Maybe it does, it does not peak, but I, if I think about this episode compared to Dandaran, I think it's better to put it at great. Damachi? It's getting interesting because Freya, who is just gaslighting everybody, is now realizing that her feelings is getting in the way. And Belle might be aware too. Freya offered Ryu for a threesome. That's crazy to me. But uh, Ryu declined. Maybe she thought about it for a second. But um, the whole like Belle was like, hey, I can fix you moment to Freya was quite shocking. And it did show me that like, hey... She's not invincible. Like, it's very ironic that the goddess of... What is she? Love? Fertility? Basically, someone that should be manipulating and seducing everybody is now becoming vulnerable due to her own feelings. Something about it that is very ironic. It was a great episode. Next up. Mao 2099. I thought Mao 2099 was... Probably top of good or bottom of great. It was pretty sick. Graham versus the uh, the English assistant secretary girl. I have a very stupid humor of enjoying those English voice lines, and obviously they know that this shit's you know there. There's a market for it. She was just spamming the amount of English lines during that moment. I thought um she is. You know, beyond the humor, the transformation scene was cool. Some sort of like cyborg, samurai type. There was a lot of moments where it looked like she was farting too. Because that's how like the, I don't know, pressure steam system is being let go behind. Graham was sick. Graham's like Excalibur-esque moment, right? It's not Excalibur, it's got a different name. That moment was pretty sick. I don't think that the production value warrants peak nor the storytelling. But in terms of just hype, entertainment... It was really fun. It was really fun. Next up. Arifureta. Arifureta is basically doing a wrap-up of the current Empire assassination arc. And we're trying to figure out what we're doing next. Arifureta probably belongs here. There was some really hype moments with the Halia saying, 
Nah, we're not just gonna join the rest of the tribes of, you know, beastmen. Fuck you. You treated us so shit. Why would we do that? And, you know, them standing for themselves, even like threatening that our blades would point to you if you get in their way was really hype. The Emperor now just being, uh, you know, a gag character is something I can get behind. I'm just glad that he's still just being used in the story, and I think he will be proven useful in the future. He's basically just someone that's funny, comedic relief, but a powerful tool slash ally that we could probably depend on due to the, the vow, the contract that we have with them. And the next uh, labyrinth that we're going into, it seems like this is totally different. We're no longer just going into the labyrinth and fighting CGI monsters, because that was one of the worst parts of Arifureto to me. It's just like, who cares about these random CGI monster threats? Come on, you and I both know that this shit doesn't matter. But now we're going into some sort of like... ReZero Season 2 trial. Hajime has woken up back in his old bed. And his personality seems to have reset. Yet, there's new characters that, you know, that shouldn't be back on Earth with us. I think Yue waked us up. So, I think this trial, this, uh, sorry, this labyrinth will be way more entertaining than before. Next up, Loner Life Isekai. It was just good. Yeah, it was just good. Nothing special really happening. I mean, we were going down into the uh, dungeons, and because we're so lucky, we got put to a lower level than before. I think we're about to meet a new girl, because obviously in the intro section, there was a girl that's like a skeleton body, yet... There's like some kind of green hair girl face that you can see overlaid behind it. Wonder what that's about? And other than that, it's pretty much it. Just like a new arc, going down the dungeon. You know, Haruka being lucky as fuck, everyone else just following. Just alright. It's just alright. Right. Next up. Talker. Talker's most recent episode was the conclusion of the brief fight between a samurai guy. And then more just deception, more planning, scheming, and then coming back at them. It's probably top of good. Probably. Or something like this. I don't know. I'm, I'm comfortable whatever this order is. I think the episode that's going to come up next is going to be really entertaining. Because now we've obviously put the Mafia boss. We, we, we just cornered him. He's a fraud. He's a liar. He has no actual like Mafia boss blood in him. But it's interesting, the storytelling of the samurai guy and this fake mafia guy, because both are bastard sons, yet one side actually accepted the bastard son and the other rejected. And the mafia guy side was the one that accepted the son. There's some parallels going on, some great story writing. And I'm sure the episode that's going to come up next, we're going to be just, you know, ending the mafia guy and free the samurai guy. And I feel bad for the other mafia like bodyguards because they don't. They didn't sign up for this shit. There's some level of respect and charisma that's to be expected from the Mafia bosses. But the guy right now we have, he sucks. Next up. Let's talk about... Dandadan. Dandadan probably is going to be the best episode of this season. Something about that flashback and how hard it hit in an emotional level. The cinematography and the production value that just gave the source material so much life. The vision, I can see it. It was so good. These are the moments where you unironically say, cinema. This is what it means to say just cinema. I know that sign is overused and, you know, people just say that to whatever they enjoy, but I truly believe that the amount of, like, freelancers that was working for this episode, they were serious. They really, really delivered an insane episode that I believe anyone could watch and be, can, can, like, resonate with. Because that flashback episode, right? Obviously, the rest of the episodes excluding the flashback. If you don't have seen the like, Dan, what the fuck do you know what's going on? But, like, the flashback itself is a very self-contained story that anyone can watch and understand. It was the perfect example of show, don't tell. It was so good. You could argue that Dandadan Dan episode 7 could be the single best episode of anime this year. As a contestant, I I, I, I would fucking vote for it. I know that ReZero obviously popped off too, but Dandadan Dan episode 7 just hit me on such a more emotional level. It Probably because of the tragedy, the, the, the catharsis, and the tragedy of Dandadan Dan episode 7 overrides the emotion of 
hope and inspiration and motivation that I got from ReZero, you know, episode 7 The Speech. Not to say that ReZero is bad, no, they're both peak, it's just this one has more of like a bias, like the reaction that I got, the emotional engagement I got from that episode was just on another level and it's due to the type of emotions I'm feeling for that show. So. Dandadan, one of the best animes that I've seen recently. I'm so glad that there's so much, you know, effort being put into this shit. Next up, Blue Lock. Blue Lock was... <sighs> it kills me to put it on great, but it was a great episode. It was actually a great episode, bro. And I think that I'm one of the most harsh people in shitting on Blue Lock as well as Tower of God because those two shows we've been watching a lot and I think they both deserve better. Obviously, the faults are still there with Blue Lock, but the amount of effort put in during the moments that matters for Nagi was really good. A lot of people were still crying and complaining about Itoshi's size goal and his movements and it was not as alive as it should have been. So for sure I get that, but the Nagi moment itself was so fucking hype. It really was. Right, we're still getting slide lock, we're still getting just ball of movements, but there's a little bit more movements, you know, happening behind the scenes. And the Nagi scene alone was actually super, super hype. Blue lock shouldn't be up here, but... What can I say, man? <laughs> what can I fucking say, man? It's just the story's killing. The story is carrying, right? The story's carrying, it deserves so much better in this. Next up, Villainous. The Villainous show was... It was just good. Right? It was uh, the end of uh, Alicia being locked in in her house and just grinding. Finally, she's reached, you know, the level that she wanted. Uh, took two years to do it, which is fucking funny to me. Because the whole premise of why she went into grind was so that she could go to school faster. Because she's too young. She's two years too young to be, you know, going to that school. The only reason she was going was that she could be like Liz... Kath Liz Cather, the main character, is like, you know, um, Watcher or something. But as she got demoted from that, she's like, nah, let me grind levels to magic. I'll get to level 80. And she's like, okay, you do it. Or 90 or something, I forget. And you would think that it would be accomplished sooner. But no, it took two fucking years. So now she's at an actual age where she can go to school. But it's just like, all right, that time constraint never really mattered, I guess. I thought we're going to grind just so that we can go in earlier rather than waiting two years. But hey, time skip happened. We're in this senior year for, you know, the uh, prince and, you know, the main character. And for us, it's like our freshman year and stuff has got to pop off. Stuff is about to pop off. It was more of a setup episode. And finally, of course, we have ReZero that we're going to be dropping. That speech was so fucking ass, bro. I can't believe y'all say this show is so good. Mm -hmm. Subaru's speech was very good. It was great. I think these two episodes definitely are cut above the rest compared to every one of these other episodes here, right? Subaru speech was great. Some people say that it was lackluster compared to the source material and the, I guess, emotion that was elicited there. For me, I thought it was a fantastic speech. Part of me wanted him to shit talk the archbishops and call each one of them out. But if you think about the whole, like, baiting people with doomer shit in the beginning to make it sound like he, not only to make it sound like, but he is the average person going through all these different negative emotions that everyone's feeling. But if he's able to round everyone up together and give them inspiration, it's a lot more relatable and impactful than, let's say, Reinhardt just giving us beast because they can't imagine themselves in Reinhardt's shoes. It was a great moment of development and growth for Subaru. And we have one more episode left, which is going to be like the finale of the attack arc. I'm very sad that, you know, ReZero is ending so quick but it's gonna come back in february and if the rumors are true we could have a lot more re-zero beyond just arc 5 hopefully that will get you know so many more episodes coming in to cover arc 6 but that's it for me dandadan definitely takes the cake at the very top it's just fucking crazy re-zero was also very amazing but again the type of emotions that i'm feeling the tragedy and the cathartic like, moments from me just crying my eyes out like that i think is why i have a much more like bias for Dandadan. And I do believe that Dandadan will probably be known as like the anime for fall 2024. Not because ReZero is bad, but because ReZero is in its third season. You naturally filter people out as you increase more seasons. It's also in a genre where it's a bit more niche compared to let's say a shonen audience. And because Dandadan is that, you know, just season one, it's shonen content, a lot of people can enjoy it. The market size, the amount of available audience is so huge. 
and it's also so fucking peak. Like, it's making movements right now, and I can't wait for so many people to make Dandadan is garbage. Dandadan is shit. It's just this hard to rage bait. But that's it from me. If you're mad about my ratings of these animes, guess what? You are such a loser getting heated over a random man's opinion about anime. See you next time.